Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is developed by Google and it is an open source platform that automates container operations. It eliminates many of the manual processes involved in deploying and scaling containerized applications. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Kubernetes will be absolutely clear to you. But before that, let me ask you a few things. Are you dreaming of a career with higher pay and more responsibilities? Or are you ready to take your skills to the next level this year? Then start investing in DevOps School certification level courses, which will help you to emerge skills for a wide range of entry level roles and as well as higher potential future positions. But with thousands of courses online and in classroom worldwide, finding the right one for your career goals can be difficult. You can consider our courses like Agile Developer, Agile QA, DevOps Certified Professionals, Site Reliability Engineering, DevSecOps and Masters in DevOps Engineering where you will have access to well-structured, easy-to-follow course content that has been developed and will be delivered by industry professionals. You can join on our training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshops then we have regular sessions available in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Delhi NCR, Mumbai and in Pune. Simply compare our many courses, find the one that suits your style and schedule best and start today. So I'm going to create NFS server for all of us and we are going to use it. So that's the NFS. Second uh, demo which I'm going to do is config map. Okay, and then secret, which is the last one. So NFS, config map, and secret. So now, now let's get started. NFS so here is the instruction you can do offline but I'm doing for you so it will not take much time okay so let's get started so these are the steps which I'm going to do to set up NFS so first thing I am going to board with NFS server predefined image what is that what is can that? we pick up image and create a pod uh that you can do that but again for that uh yeah that's a good idea uh yeah that's a, that's also a good idea uh, but i need to find out right right image for it and right now right now i don't know that which image so instead of trying it out let's uh, keep it this one only because this is tried and tested steps okay sure okay so Clear the screen i am setting up so here installing this nfs server in the master itself why enable the nfs server and enable the rpc build Enable the NFS lock. Enable the IDM and RPC bind. Start it. Start the NFS server and NFS lock. And finally, NFS IDM. And then check the status. So now service is running. So NFS server is done. Now I'm going to create one directory which is called techno tree. So techno tree is one of the directory which I created in root. And here I'll give the permission 777. Okay, 777. Now I'm going to because on the boot itself tomorrow it should be available. So for that here I'm going to give uh, write read and write permission okay this i am going to expose it export it file system done and finally start the nfs server so 
NFS server is started. Can we see the so mount techno tray? And you see techno tray. So now it got set up properly. So this is the setup is done. Now, if you want to validate a NFS server through client, you have to do this stuff. Okay. So I can oh, I just need to install uh, NFS utils and uh, then check this and mount it and then you can validate. This is a manual validation, so I'll skip it right now. I'll move on to the real work, which is here. So guys, this is the code which we have to understand a little bit and then get started. Okay. So right now, I'm putting up here. Look at my screen, please. Here, what we are having, it's a deployment. Okay. Now deployment and the this deployment is having a spec dot containers a spec dot volumes and here you see this is nfs server now what is ip address of this i have to change it so ip address of my, my machine is if config because this is an nfs server right so nfs server uh 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 zero uh, uh, where is that because of so many pod is running so here it is ip address is this one okay so i'll just change the ip address the path is same so i don't have to use it so this is the nfs see this is the volume plugin this is the server this is the path now you set it up this is the now where we are using so spec dot containers dot volume mounts here test pd is there you see that inside the test pd you are getting it test volume is there that's all Re remaining things you know that you have done it deployments all already together so that's okay so did you understand this uh, deployment everyone yeah guys did you understand this deployment okay so here i am going to write this so clear so clear exit i don't know which machine this is okay by the way i set up the nfs server in some worker actually by mistake but no not a problem this is okay let me close this and open up workstation which is here auth mumbai click open let me change this system color 16 click ok apply now send to us Kubernet Rajesh. Okay, so vi nfs dot yaml file. Okay, now I am going to copy this whole things and paste it. Done. It's a deployment. So kubectl apply hyphen f nfs hyphen n is equal to Rajesh. Now it's got created. Get pods hyphen n is equal to Rajesh. Now here, how many replicas we had? I guess. Oh my God, 30 replicas. I have to modify. Uh, so I don't want this much. Where's the name, by the way? Here it is. My dep one. So QCTL edit edit deploy here hyphen n is equal to Rajesh. So replicas. I'm looking for the fit. Here it is. Okay. I'll make it only three. Okay, 
done so now here i got this qctl get pods hyphen n is equal to rajesh so guys here these are the three now what i will do i'll copy inside the uh, one of the files so here uh, qctl exec hyphen it hyphen it and and bin bash and hyphen n is equal to rajesh now inside this i forgot the location where i mounted and that is test pd so cd test cd test pd now here touch ramu kaka dot txt this is my data can i validate this file has come or not so where is in this techno tree right so in this machine you get in the techno tree techno tree see ramu kaka okay now can i see this file in all other all other uh, nodes also uh, all other ports also sorry so let's see that so here last time what i did i did exact which one 57 this time uh, 448 uh, which one x2 last one so this time i'll change this to some other port okay and you see here i got into this cd ls ls test pd and you see ramu kaka now i'll come out of it what i will do i will delete this time so delete delete pod and you see i am deleting the pod and hyphen n is equal to rajesh now deployment will generate one more pod you know that the behavior of deployments already so so here you got another pod created this is the one which is this one you see 10 second h so can i go inside this pod this time and check that file is present or not so exec and here enter cd test pd and you see so data is persistent here in nfs okay so guys did you understand that how this nfs work works everyone i understand that the plugin also supports things like password or different ports for nfs uh the configuration in the sense that's the ip that's the path but you may need to add like uh, user and password credentials to access the nfs oh, yes. or maybe listening on different yes. ports yes yes it is supported it is supported i don't have example provided right now but yeah i've seen those uh it's supported yeah got it yeah. guys did you understand this nfs yes okay now next demo is config map now what is a config map if you remember the storage is there in the cluster itself in a key and value format but the one of the drawbacks of the config map is you can see the data you can see the data so so let's get it config map okay so you can refer it online this one my blog here you can check it out offline hours or maybe during the lab so first of all look at this here here this is the content that can be key value whatever it is this is the content what is the content this file so i'm in a workstation okay so this is not workstation this is workstation okay uh, exit this workstation okay i'll create one file vi reverse proxy dot conf it can be anything by the way environment variable some small text also but i'm just using the big file so you can visualize better so this is the content uh here i pasted it this content is very important for the applications it's a reverse proxy now look at this here this command i'm running it look at my screen here 
qctl create config map name of the config from file it can take you from the environment also hyphen e okay by the way this is the command way to create command line to create a config map by the way you can also use the yaml file also i also taught you how to cheat the yaml file from the command line also so understand that so here created a yaml i made a one mistake here this i created in the default namespace that is a mistake which i did get cm okay see here so i should have done it in hyphen n is equal to rajesh i did create it over there also okay so i got this here hyphen n rajesh so here this config map is there data is there by the way in one config map you can keep as many data you want it okay key value key value pairs one of the disadvantage of this config map is, is you can see the content that is a problem so here let me show you the content describe cm name of the cm and hyphen n is equal to rajesh and here you see you can see the content this is the key this is the value okay so you can see the content that's the advantage disadvantage but anyways i have to get this config map used so what do we do look at this is a one of the pod okay it can be deployment also so pod is a very simple to explain it so now it's using c pod pod dot spec dot volume see the config map this is the one plugins which is making it available what is the name of the config map what is the key where is the path so this path has to be changed so this path oh no this path uh, see here this is the key which i have it here uh, let me let me show you here this is the key which i have it here this is the key this is the data okay so key so this is the key now this file will be created in the the place where you mount it so here you see config map uh, uh, name of config map which is here and sorry this is the name not this is the name i got confused so volume name config volume config value okay now this is the key and you want to push put it in this file but where exactly which path this path are you able to understand this concept yes okay so this is the config map using okay i have created a config map so now i am going to create vi cm dot yaml okay and then here my okay save it now kubectl create hyphen f cm cm dot yaml hyphen n is equal to rajesh and now i created get pod hyphen n is equal to rajesh which i have to do that get pod hyphen n is equal to rajesh and which is the one i think uh, this is the one let me read the name i forgot to read uh, hello world nginx so this is the one so it's still creating it let's wait for it and it got still creating it it has a it has a two container by the way how come okay yeah look at this here guys there's one container here it is there's one container here it is two container one container is listening on 80 port another container is listening on 3000 port so it's the image this one and this is the this is the nginx 1.11 okay so that's the reason it's taking little time now it's running how to go inside this so qctl exec container uh, pod id hyphen it uh, bin bash uh, sorry bad mis my mistake it should be it before that so hyphen it and after that bin bash bin bash and hyphen n is equal to rajesh i am going inside this i am inside that uh, pod container basically can I go inside this and check that file myconfo.conf has come or not? So here, see myconfo.conf and let's look at the content also. See, so it's the same content which I, which I copied from here and created a config map. So the question is where is from where it is coming? This stored in ATCD and they will mount it when you use the plugin which is called config map. So config map is one of the volume plugin which stores the data in the
the start itself. Is that clear, guys? Uh, one question. Does this support uh, versioning for config files? Uh, no, this is not support. So if you want to modify it, uh, you have to again uh, re roll out the new changes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So guys, secret. Next one is secret. The difference between config map and secret is this data is not in uh, you can see it but this data got encoded yes again i'm repeating encoded okay. not i said encryption uh sorry to interrupt uh yeah. so that you, i hope you will cover it in ldap or you know authentication uh, part of it but uh, the permission mm -hmm. can be restricted at a namespace level right for the user yes yes very much uh, this r back is there which is pending yeah. which i'll talk about tomorrow so in that RBAC case is, uh, you know config map also can be at user level uh, yes of course uh, you have to grant that user only the namespace then in that case he'll not go beyond that namespace no even though within the namespace can we restrict at the you know con you know config map can be read access or yes, write access yes. Yes, yes, you can individual object access. You can give it granted to the user individual object access means the object access means for RC deployment CM secret and whether he should read write edit what is that delete all these things you can do it through our back. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. So secret. So here there's only difference between the config map and secret is this data is getting encoded not encrypted so please mindful about this so now can we show you the secret so for that i need secret and i think i don't have right now but no not a problem not a problem uh, just a second uh, no not a problem i'll get get it get it to you that one basically you don't need anything it's the same thing uh, only that encoding need to be done and for that i need one command which i want to access it so here techno So so kind secret here it is so look at this here uh, I'll, I'll put this all these programs here see here what you are doing you are creating secret kind is equal to secret what is the name of the secret my secret okay what is the encoding techniques opac what is the username this is the username this is the password this is converted into the uh, into the this has been encoded you see that it's encoded using opac how can you encode for that let me show you the command for that uh, base 64 base ha huh, here it not this uh, i'm not able to find it no problem so Kubernet tutorial, uh, Kubernet labs, and secret config map and secret. So, how do you get this? Let me show you so you will understand the end to end. Uh, and this is the if you like dark Kubernetes session so far, please enroll for our channel membership 399 plan to get access of all the parts. I'm looking for the command. Just give me two seconds. I'll just pause the recording. 
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, anyways, I have a backup recording. It's a repetitive thing. So yeah, so here you have uh, uh, this volume. This is a plugin name ID and now you are using here. So if this, this program will work if you are setting up the cluster using COPS or EKS, else it will not work. Make sense? Sir, EKS, right? Hello? Can uh, you said COPS or EKS? Yes, co because COPS and EKS allows you to integrate uh, Kubernetes with a cloud, right? Yeah, yeah. EKS is, on, EKS is on the cloud itself, AWS itself. Yeah, understood. Yeah. So, guys, this is the EVS. Uh, so uh, uh, the... You cannot use this directly without the EKS? See, uh, ultimately, you require the integration. That means uh, the authentications has to be enabled, plugins has to be installed. So, those are things will be done by COPS if you do it, you want to do it easily. Or if you don't want to use managed one, oh, sorry, if you don't want to use manual one, manual managed one like a EKS will also do the same thing. Okay, got it. Okay, so now next one is EFS. So let me copy this program here for the future reference. I'll self forget. Now if EFS, so EFS also, let me see, I should be having the program. Uh, huh, see here. So look at this here. Uh, volumes, name of the volumes, NFS. EFS is in nature of NFS. This is the EFS address. Okay. Where do you get a EFS? You can create, you can go to the EFS service. You can create it here. Here. So when you go and create an account, I mean, uh, uh, EFS uh, handle, then you'll get something like this. Okay. And path is this one. This program will also work in, uh, work in uh, EKS and COPS because integration required with AWS. Okay. Make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, so now this is the EFS, which is a network file system. So now one important thing which I have not covered so far, and that is called, uh, do you want lab or do you want me to continue? Everyone? We'll continue. Okay, so guys, important thing which is not covered is uh, PV and PV and PVC. Okay, PVC. So, hope you remember what is a PV. What is a PV? Guys? Persistent volume. Persistent volume. Yes, persistent volume. Yeah, persistent volume. Uh, but created by whom? Administrator. 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 And PVC by user. So, now let mm -hmm. me create. Let me create a PV first. Now the question is, I can create a PV, but using what? I'm an admin right now, okay? I'm acting like an admin. I can create a PV, but using what uh, storage technology? You have to decide. So EBS will work? No, because integration is not there. EFS will work? No, because integration is not there. Uh, what else I have having? NFS, I can use it, which I have it. And uh, I can use host path also host path which is working so can we use nfs because nfs anyways i am having working so i can use nfs make sense guys yes okay so now pv using nfs so now let's do that so here let's uh, go to uh, go to nfs okay enter nfs pv i should i should have written but anyways, I search it, searched already. So here, so guys, there is a one tutorial which has come. Persistent volume claim with NFS. You can use with any technology, by the way, PV. It's very simple. It's not very difficult to understand that. So I'm creating two PV, okay? Just for the visualization. So 
uh, all the explanation you have it you can try in uh, after during the lab lab hours okay but right now i'll move on to the real work so guys here what i am doing correct currently so here here i am creating pv please look at it, the code of pv okay see here i am kind is equal to pv persistent volume how much capacity you want to create of pv 5 gb okay and where it is that so this is the network nfs so so so, so ip address i forgot let me steal it from the top somewhere here it is so techno tree and let me copy whole two lines server and path and here ip address and path each path each this one so guys what i am doing creating a, per, a persistent volume uh, in advance for the uh, pool of persistent volume in advance for the use cases so guys let me tell you persistent volume again is a namespace true okay so understand that so here kubectl get pv hyphen n is equal to rajesh see here there is no resources found in rajesh namespace so pv there is no so now can i create here let me tell you here you are creating pv and persistent volume reclaim reclaim policy recycle that means once you uh, end this using this one then it will be recycle that means automatically add this capacity back to the pool actually okay so this is the remember provisioning binding using and and recycling so something like that the four phases which we discuss in the morning so here i'm creating a pv name of the pv is pv1 so manually i am creating this one okay so vi pv1 dot yaml and created manually so now can i create one more pv pv2 also pv2 5 gb one more i am creating vi pv2 dot yaml so two pv i created and this time i'll create difference is 2 gb okay understand that I want to show you something here. That's the reason I'm doing it. So please be focused on the screen. So two, I created two GV only. Okay. And another one, which I created five GV. Okay. Now, so one PV, two PV. Can I do one thing? QCTL create hyphen hyphen F PV one PV two and hyphen N is equal to Rajesh. Okay. And there's some spelling mistake. Okay, let me do one by one. So done. PV2. Okay, it used to work. Okay, star works actually. Yeah. Okay, fine. So here, uh, so I got created two PV. Can I see that first PV? Please look at this here. It says status available. That means binding has not happened. That means no one is using it. And when no one is, uh, if some binding is happened and then release, then they will recycle this. Okay. So this is a 5 GB. This is a 2 GB and age. And also you can see claim and dot, 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 claim none. So now what I'm going to do, this is a PV. Now, how do we create a PVC persistent volume claim? Who will do that? PVC will be done by user. So what he will do that to create a PVC? This is the one. Look at this. So by user, he will run this command. He will create persistent volume claim. What is a claim one? And he is demanding. Uh, see, I created first one 5 GB and second one 2 GB. So can I demand 3 GB first? Tell me one thing. If I demand 3 GB, what will happen? You tell me. Which will be from PV1. If I demand 3 GB, it will automatically fix yeah. the. And if I demand one. Yeah, yeah, that is that P1 or P2? Remember, it's a pool. Yeah, it's a pool. It's a pool. Okay, so it's a pool of the PV. So it will get. If I go to one GV, you get it. This one also. This one also. Okay. So understand that. So I'll go for three GV, and I'm asking the PVC for three GV. So here, PBI PVC dot YAML, and 
here i do this 3 gb can i do this here give ctl create iphone app first i'll get the pvc do we have a pvc or not so pvc iphone n is equal to rajesh and you see there is no so can i create it so create create iphone f uh, sir some noise is coming from someone can you please mute yourself yeah so qctl create create hyphen f and pvc uh, dot yaml hyphen n is equal to rajesh and guys i created here and you see here get pvc is see it's bounded earlier it was not there bounded and can i see the pv now can i see the pv now you see here see here see here 5 gb bound see pvc so now see here one of the pool got used where it's got used the name of the claim is pvc claim is rajesh nfs claim that's my name of the claim okay name of the claim which is this one nfs claim okay rajesh is the namespace okay so guys did you understand that i created a pool of two pvc a pool two pvc pv and one claim it okay but what about if you claim it and it's not available what will happen so you will get pending so let me do the pvc one more time and here sorry i have to change the name i forgot this pvc okay here i am going to change nfs claim one two okay and here see here i am claiming one more time and you see i claimed it one more time and you see that what is happening pvc pvc why is pending why is pending guys why is pending there is no certificate yeah it's used now only two left now one and two another one so it's available no it's available so why it's got pending there is no pv that meets the requirement of three gigabytes wonderful yes that's correct you are 100 percent correct so this is a pending why because there's a there's no available in the pool there's no as such pv available in the pool which can satisfy the requirement of this pvc that's the reason it's got pending so wh whose mistake this one this is administrator mistake or is used uh, user is misusing the resources so it's like this so for to overcome this you will also create a storage class which is a dynamic pool business but that is okay but now the question is how can you use that pvc now i think that is very simple for you to understand look at this program here volumes this time the plugins will become a volume pvc name of the pvc which is a nfs claim one and you mount inside the container somewhere here did you understand this guys uh, one question can you partition an existing pv that is getting used but not to the full capacity into smaller pvs meaning uh, right no, now you one have pv your... is for one okay so you cannot extract yeah. the remaining one... requirements no one pv for one pvc only one by one one two on mapping okay so you have to create a pvs like that by the way these are the predefined pvs uh, most of the time the, they will tell you how much they need a pv so it's like this using the nfs pvs is like you get a portability done that the pod is getting replaced then the data is not lost so guys this is the whole topic for the for the storage and which includes so many things we dis discussed now we discussed about uh uh empty there we discuss about host path we discuss about nfs alone then we discuss about config map we discuss about the secret we discuss about uh ebs but i did not show you the demo but you can just check it out ebs and then we discuss about efs here's the example we discuss about pv we discuss about the pvc guys any any questions so far Rajesh, uh, do, do we have any driver for object storage basically for S3 or something? 
yeah git is there no git but got deprecated i mean it's not removed but is there deprecated okay guys more question uh, how do you re i mean how do you uh, you know uh, find out the you know um, something like it's unused how much is used see uh, basically when you look at uh, volumes right basically it's more like uh, quota assign the quota and things all that is there when it comes to that so do we have a yeah. provision in kubernetes to control that uh basically when you create a pvc there only you can control this a pvc yeah. there when you can control this uh okay namespace label also you can control you can you you can tell limit there is one resources called limit okay let me okay. show you ctl api version there is one called limit grep limit Oh, sorry, version it should be resources. My bad. Resources. Okay, so this is the limit you can try, and limit will help you to uh, restrict the storage or CPU or RAM or something like access many things. I'll show you that example in the RBAC if you want. Okay. Okay, guys. So now I am updating these notes to all of you. I would request you to try it out. This is the most important one because running a pod without a storage is just a waste of time. So you have to try and get going. So uh, one question. Okay. I understand that basically the PV and PVC are shared volumes that can be accessed and mounted on every container. Uh, over every pod, sorry. Uh, but yeah. for example, uh, I assume that the ISCASI and the fiber channels, which are slightly different in that generally they are block mo uh, volumes that can only be mounted to a single computer for a read write access, would be a bit more problematic. Basically, um, uh, how would you configure ISCASI with PV, PVC, and everything? I don't think you can actually mount it in several nodes, which would be required to be able to mount it as a volume. Uh, so, uh, block storage, if you are using, then you cannot mount it to multiple uh, pod. Uh, if you are using the, the file storage, you can mount it in this. So, that's a file storage which is network available. So that's the reason I use an NFS for the PV and PVC. If you are using the block storage, then I think stateful set will be the right example for the right uh, object for you. What is a stateful set? I'll talk about tomorrow. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, so I have updated the notes. Thanks for watching. If you like dark Kubernetes sessions so far, please enroll for our channel membership 399 plan to get access of all the parts. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.